okay? And I was told not to, pre to prepare a slide, so I will just go on and say a few points. Um, with regard to providing equitable health workforce, I think uh, we look into what has been transpiring across the world. We cannot ignore the epidemiological transitions, which has made it necessary for us to have technological developments. And that in turn has actually influenced the workforce differentiation, which I think now we need to really look into it and say what we can do so that we actually achieve universal health coverage. Um, I will just want to pin on the importance of collaboration because everything else depends on how we collaborate. With the Tanzania and the UK diaspora, I think this is a welcome opportunity. And I would go straight on to say how we can influence the workforce in making sure that we actually achieve universal health coverage or even if at least make some attempt to get there. I think I'll focus on the nurses being a workforce of the whole of healthcare in Tanzania, I think nurses make about more than 60% of the health workforce. And I think we need to focus there. Why? Because nurses are the point of care, the first point of care and the last point of care for healthcare across the lifespan in all societies. And I believe if we work towards developing that workforce, I think we might be making some advanced steps to achieve that. And for the diaspora, I can only contribute, I think, very maximally if we focus on first, joint technical teams. I think we have teams with different professional uh, uh, achievements and qualifications, so we can form these joint technical teams, which can talk about what is really important on both sides and how that can be. Uh, contributed towards this change. With the joint technical teams, I think we need to focus on evidence-based clinical practice, and that can be exchanged in both sides of the world. We need to find how we can knowledge, you, we can synthesize knowledge. I know Professor Kibiki was speaking about research, but I'm also, um, I've been a chief research officer at the Commission for Science and technology, and I do know that there's been a wealth of knowledge that has been developed, but we've not made use of it. We have never managed to synthesize knowledge that is coming from research, and I think these technical teams can actually do that. And then also production of the clinical guidelines. I know the UK is very well advanced in doing that, and I think we can learn a thing or two from them. So that is first on the joint technical teams. And I'm also thinking that uh, we need to benefit a lot from exchange programs. With the exchange programs, I think it's also, again, the qualified workforce from both sides can visit each other and you know, do lectures, exchange students for experiential learning. And I know we have adjunct positions which can be maximized. Competence building on both sides. I think the UK diaspora can learn a lot from what has been happening in Tanzania, how much we have had to adjust it in order to meet society demand for healthcare. We need to develop knowledge, we need to develop skills and attitudes, and I think it can be done through the exchange programs. We do have some few examples, which I think when we get to the bottom of this, we might learn from each other. There's one area I think also we can learn through these collaborations is community education programs. Uh, this is specifically health literacy. I think the COVID-19 pandemic has given us an insight to what the society knows about healthcare. So I feel health literacy is very important through both sides, especially now we have infodemics and everybody's an expert in the media. So technology has something to do with it and we can make use of it. The third one I would like to talk about is the education programs. We have education programs within the field of nursing, I think within the medicines, and I think we can share some knowledge, we can program, or we can have joint programs which would deliver competence or even uh, degree programs, you name it, what, uh, certificate programs on very specific niche that we can focus on. I understand that um, clinical governance development in the UK is very much advanced, and I think that is what is needed in Tanzania. We could develop online programs, prevention programs, and especially now that we have been so tasked into taking care of the sick ones, we forgot that prevention can actually help us much, much more than 
um, we we'll wait until the patients come to the hospital. MUHAS is an important entity in the health workforce because I think that's one of the um, one of the first uh, public uh, medical schools and uh, allied health sciences program, and he's been developing its workforce for quite a while. But I think we also need a hand to see how these education programs can be tailored to meet the society's demand for healthcare. We have different specializations, but I think we also have an opportunity to learn from each other. I will just narrow myself down to those three programs and let my colleague Halima take lead. I think we only have 10 minutes. Halima. <laughs> 